All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another uh, AFL trade video rumors, discussion, speculation. So we're getting right into the the juice and the the bones of the of the AFL trade period right now. And it's it's enough to make a, a fat chubby kid who makes AFL videos squirt all garlic aioli sauce out of his private parts on his screen. I'm I'm just saying. But anyway, we've got a bunch more stuff to talk about today again some more trade requests we do have tom barras requesting a trade to hawthorne again i previously made a video on this which actually got quite a fair amount of views again hawk ball is super popular right now and the hawthorne fans have come out in numbers to support yours truly probably more their club i don't think they care about me at all and you know what that's fair enough but there was actually a lot of you guys in the comments section saying that tom barras is not worth a first round pick and look i couldn't disagree with that anymore and the fact is even though i couldn't disagree with that anymore there's also reports and sources going out there right now that west coast are not going to be doing this trade at all unless that first round pick is involved and apparently it is the starting point of the trade so if you're a hawks fan and you think that tom barras is not worth the first round pick i think it's going to be extra sad to probably realize that i think they're actually going to have to trade up one or two more pieces to add to this uh puzzle especially if the leaks and rumors and reports are actually true again in my opinion i think it should just be a first round pick which I think at the time of making this video is like 12 or whatever to Hawthorne. Again, that will probably become 13 or 14 later on due to the fact that Brisbane have a father-son player in Levi Ashcroft coming in. And again, the Saints, uh, Josh Battle, his contract to Hawthorne as well is going to be super high-ended apparently. So again, that will be another top 10 pick in compensation to the Saints. So in reality, this could be pick 14 or 15 for Tom Barras. And I think it does kind of suck for West Coast that you lose one of your better players just for pick 15. Again, it is very good for Hawthorne. I don't think people realize that when Tom Barras is on, he is one of the best like key defenders in the game. Again, with where his career is going, the injuries and whatnot, I think he does belong as probably like that second or third uh, key defender on an AFL team. The reality is Hawthorne are bringing in Josh Battle as well. And Josh Battle was one of those guys who I thought would have been a second or third key on some team. Has ended up showing he can easily by far be one of the best key defenders in the game. Again, he has had a phenomenal season. He has definitely earned the pay that he's about to get. And I think having him, Sicily, and Barras is like your main three key defenders down there. Sicily being like the, the guy who can play smaller, tall, and as the spare is, yeah, that's pretty cool. Again, if I was a Hawthorne fan, I'd be having a fucking orgasm at my screen right now. It's pretty tough. But again, West Coast, pick 15. He's a top five player for you guys, but they need to do a rebuild. They are looking to bring in picks and assets and whatnot. And the reality is that pick 15 is probably going to go to Richmond for like Liam Baker and maybe a, a third round pick that they have. And if you do do that trade, that's still a, a bonus because Liam Baker's like three years younger than Barras. He is way more injury free. And at, at the time of what their team is desperately needing, they could really use an elite halfback and a guy who can chip in in the midfield and, of course, ball use. They don't really have a whole lot of that right now. And I think Liam Baker coming in, again, could be straight away a vice captain for them. He's a vice captain at Richmond. Uh, I don't think he'll be a future captain, but also just bringing in another leader to their team. That makes a lot of sense. And at least you're getting a guy who you know you're going to play full-time while Barras is had his injury issues for West Coast. So how this is all going to go, if, if the Liam Baker thing, that might not even happen. Uh, he's linked to Freo as well. But 
I think, yeah, this deal will get done quite comfortably. Com comfortably? Comfortably? What the fuck am I trying to say? Tom Barras to Hawthorne, I think, gets done pretty easily. And I would say just their first round pick should be enough just to make this deal work. Then we've got the ongoing Christian Petrarca news. It says that Christian Petrarca does want to play for a rival Victorian club in 2025 per the age. Petrarca reportedly reminded Melbourne officials in the exit interview today of his desires to play his football elsewhere. Again, the leaks about Christian Petrarca have been more crazy than some leaks you would find on Twitter or X videos, whatever the fuck they call that page now, right? The reality is from what we've heard on Footy Classified, apparently not only does Christian Petrarca want to play for a different team, a different Melbourne team in 2025, but he wants to play in front of much bigger crowds and one of the bigger Melbourne teams to apparently help boost his brand on like TikTok and shit like that. And again, I kind of thought, surely that can't be right. A grown ass man thinking that he can go and just boost his brand. And that's the main thing he's worrying about. But then when you go and check his TikTok, he's got a fucking new sponsor in about every single video he does. If he's cooking a spaghetti bolognese, you're damn sure the fucking pasta sauce is sponsored by Coles or some shit. It doesn't surprise me at all. The reality is, is the clubs that I think he would be interested in would be the big four Melbourne clubs, obviously Richmond and Collingwood, the two bigger ones. And then again, Carlton who are getting back to that big, big, big destination club. And then Essendon, right? The reality is though, Collingwood have no salary cap and no picks. Richmond have all the picks in the world and all the salary cap, but are the worst team in the world and want to do a hard rebuild. Essendon, again, I don't know how much salary they've got. Probably not the greatest amount. I don't really know what's going on there, but they still probably don't have the capital to get Petrarca. And then Colton, damn well don't have any salary cap. There were rumors about them trading Mackay in this deal. Mackay apparently and his agent have made it very well aware that he will be staying at Carlton. Uh, apparently Melbourne are not even interested. They don't want to trade Petrarca, right? They've said it on all the TV shows and whatnot. But the sad part is for them, Petrarca wants to leave. And I don't know where he goes. And if you're like, well, if it's not the main big four, could it be like Hawthorne? But then Hawthorne are getting Barass and Battle. They're using their picks and capital and, and, and you know, coin to go out and get those blokes. Could it be Geelong? Well, yeah, they probably have the money and they've got the capital to do it. But Christian Petrarca made it very clear he wants to be in a Melbourne club. Unfortunately, if I look at my geography, uh, fucking two plus two equals Geelong is not actually in Melbourne. It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't work out. Again, I think Carlton are the most likely to get this done. If this does happen, technically Carlton are by far the most likely but it just i don't know they obviously would be interested and realistically Mackay, again not the most liked player out there especially by some carlton fans has had a rough couple years for the football club and he's on about 1.1 million a year he hasn't been good up there there have been stats that have shown statistically they are sometimes better without Mackay down forward there was even one of the talk shows said they should have Mackay play back next year to play with Weedering. I don't fucking know if that's going to happen. That might be a bit far-fetched. But they have their first round pick, which at the time making this video is like 13, not very good, 12 or 13. They got their first round pick next year and they got Mackay. I still don't think Mackay pick 12 and like pick 12 next year gets the deal done for Petrarca. Melbourne are 100% going to be wanting a extremely good player and probably a top five pick and a future first. That's just the reality of things. Again, if we were to say Richmond weren't rebuilding and wanted to trade pick one, I would think a deal of like Tom Lynch pick one, a future first would get it done. But then why the fuck would Richmond do that? They are completely rebuilding and obviously it just makes no sense. None of this makes sense is what I'm trying to say. I don't understand why Petrarca is fully trying to work his way out of Melbourne. I don't see an option where this happens unless Essendon can somehow or rather trade up to get like a guaranteed top six pick and then they 
I don't even know, move that top six pick, a future first and a very good player to get Petrarca. Again, it still doesn't make sense because I don't know what player that would be. Yeah, I think Carlton will be the most interested. They're technically the most realistic just because they've got Mackay and the contracts kind of add up. Um, and Mackay is a key forward that Melbourne needs. But they don't have the picks. Uh, Petrarca is still a top 10 player in the game who can be a top five player when he's on. You're going to need a lot to, to get him to the squad. Again, another one we've seen is uh, apparently Ivan Soldo is potentially on the move. A watch on Ivan Soldo at Port Adelaide this trade period. The Ruckman has had a level of disenchantment one season into his career at the power. He's battled a knee injury and was dropped for round 15 and now lost his spot to Jordan Sweet. Again, I don't know if this is technically true. This could be a load of bullshit. But you know how there's those guys who call up on SCN and they're like, I heard this and that take it to the bank like only one third of the time are they true but some people just know one caller did actually call up and say that take this to the bank st kilda will be very interested in Ivan Soldo and would try and trade for him this would kind of make sense considering for the last couple of years st kilda have tried to have two ruckmen in their team we know even though royal marshall was one of the best ruckmen in the game when he plays key forward he's also one of the best key forwards in the game it's just unfortunate he hasn't been able to find the perfect mix. In reality, though, if you do get Ivan Soldo, you can play Marshall as a 70% key forward to help out Max King and have two really good options down there. Again, they've been trying to do this. They had Tom Campbell play like bolt games for St. Kilda for the last couple of years. This doesn't fucking surprise me at all. They also offered, I don't know why I've forgotten his name, but the Ruckman from Essendon, before he even played a game, they offered him a four-year deal. Uh, so there's a ton to go off of this. I still think Ivan Soldo will stay at Port because they gave up a future second to get him, which has ended up being an okay pick. Ivan Soldo would still technically be like the best backup Ruckman in the game then on. So they're probably going to try and keep him to that contract especially if Jordan Sweet were to get injured, which could very well happen, or Ivan Soldo just hits form again and Jordan Sweet just plays average games, they could maybe do a swap there. But I wouldn't be surprised if St. Kilda were like, we'll give you a future second and a future fourth or something. Like the same deal Richmond got back, they were like, we'll do that for Soldo and Port were like, yeah, maybe right. And then just went and signed some veteran Ruckman and free agency or even tried to go out and draft one. So there's definitely a lot going on there. St. Kilda also just delisted uh, Seb Ross, who is a two-time best and fairest for them. Reality is Seb Ross should probably get another contract in another club. I know he's not really that good anymore. An inside midfielder averaging 16 and a half disposals a game is not that great, but I think he was like the sub for a couple of them. One team I think who could actually really use Seb Ross does happen to be Collingwood. I mean, reality is Collingwood are desperate for depth. As I mentioned in the previous video, Richards and Noble both requested a trade. McRae hasn't come through on the VFL. They don't have their first round pick. Tom Mitchell and whatnot are always injured. Pendlebury's going to be like 48 next year. Sidebottom is going to be like 42. They're probably going to need someone else. Seb Ross is a free dude. And if you get him back to his consistent footy, he could maybe average you like 18 disposals to 20 disposals a game and has shown the willingness to be able to play sub. So very well could also happen. But again, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment your thoughts and opinions on this all down below. Uh, do you guys think any of these trades will happen, especially like the Petrarca one, going to potentially Carlton, Essendon maybe? Could Richmond somehow back out the rebuild and offer a trade up? I really don't know. Of course, as well, don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRL slash vlogging channels. Links for them will be in the description down below. I post a crap ton of content over there as well. So again, it would also mean a lot if you went and checked them out. But again, as I was saying, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment your thoughts and opinions on this all down below. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.